friends welcome to python video tutorials so in this video i am going to give you brief information about the common functions which we may use in data engineering part uh, when it comes to data engineering primarily we will depend on pyspark but still for some requirements we need to use core python features called the common functions and common list comprehensions so that is also very important to reduce the number of lines of code and to satisfy a few requirements in single line a similar way we need to understand comparison and logical operators so this is very important uh, primarily when we are handling data when we are writing our own transformations like logics okay uh, for data validations part and any other requirements comparison operators logical operators plus common functions so what we will do today i will explain a few information about a comparison operators how it will work logical operators how we will use then few functions so when it comes to comparison operators are common same as other languages like sql or any other languages but the only difference you can identify here it is equal to so double equal to we will use as a comparison operator single equal to we will use as a assignment operator so that's the difference you need to identify so whenever you are going with the uh, maybe other languages you can find this difference so a equal to 3 and b equal to 4 this is called assignment so a is a variable it will create and we are going to assign a 3 value so that is called assignment operator single equal to a double equal to is a comparison operator then remaining others operators are same like uh, not equal to and same thing a uh, greater than less than greater than equal to less than equal to but when whenever you are using this comparison operators it will return true or false it will return true or false so based on the condition so based on the condition if it is satisfied it will return true if it is not satisfied it will return false let's understand a few examples equal to so 33 double equal to 33 so both numbers left side and right side both are same so both are same means comparison operators if it is satisfied that statement it should return true see here then 33 double equal to 44 is this satisfied no this statement is should not a same because 33 and 44 are two different numbers so it is not same it should return false so that is called equal to so double equal to will be using for comparison operator then similar way greater than and less than and even i mentioned the note here double equal to will be using as a comparison operator single equal to we will be using as assignment operator then when it comes to not equal to so opposite for equal to so opposite for equal to means which we will be using it's the same as in other languages okay so 10 not equal to 20 so condition is satisfied so condition satisfied means it should return true 40 not equal to 40 actually 40 is equal to 40 so condition is not satisfied returning false so this way which we can use comparison operators similar way greater than so 44 greater than 22 condition satisfied it should return true 33 greater than 111 it is false then less than 21 less than 41 okay so 21 less than 41 true similar way 23 less than 13 false it is returning false okay then greater than equal to uh, similar way less than equal to so 24 so greater than equal to 24 true anyway we are using equal to if it is uh, greater than or equal to so similar way 23 greater than equal to 12 it should return true or if i go with some other value 23 greater than equal to 44 it's false okay. then less than equal to so less than equal to 23 less than equal to 23 anyway equal to is there both are same so it will return true or 21 less than equal to 41 true less than or equal to less than or equal to 
then when it comes to logical operators so more than one condition if you have a requirement we can use logical operators so logical operators primary requirement will be always like whenever you're joining a two tables so joining condition so we'll be using and or or not so unmet both statements should be satisfied so x less than 5 x less than 10 if both are satisfied then only and will return true if any one is not satisfied it will return false similar way or so or is just opposite for that opposite means any one is satisfied then it will return true but and means both should be satisfied if any one statement is satisfied then it will return true then not not is exact opposite for and so and or, or whatever both statements it may be and or not opposite for that if it is returning true then it will give you false if it is returning false it will return true that is called opposite for that so let's look at this less 10 less than 20 true then 20 less than 30 true the similar way here 10 less than 30 30 greater than 20 both are satisfied so when it comes to and means both are satisfied if any one is not satisfied if one is not satisfied it will return false so first one is satisfied but 20 greater than 30 it is false so if any one is false it will return false okay and if i go with the 40 less than 20 so both are false it will return false so and written it will return true when if both statements are satisfied both statements are true R means if any one is satisfied, it will return true. Okay, any one is satisfied. Then, so when it comes to 14 less than 20, okay, 14 less than 20, and then I will go with 50 greater than 30. Both are satisfied. So, R is a logical operator if any one is satisfied it will return then not is opposite for that so not is an opposite for that so this is returning true then opposite for that is false that is not operator then when it comes to common functions so these are our common functions which we can use uh, based on our requirement but we may use we may not use but at least knowing this function is very important uh, there is a function called enumerate so primarily whenever you are reading data so whenever you are reading data and list and tuple so this will have a sequence items so it will have indexes okay so if you want to generate any sequence numbers for a particular value so then you can go with enumerate so enumerate and particular value so what will it will do so it will generate a sequence number for that so it will generate a sequence number so whatever the values are there it will give you a sequence number for that so it is a sequence so pi spark then and every value you can see it generated a sequence number called like this you can see so that is enumerate so it's like a uh, one object or you can say one data set if you want to add any sequence number we can go with this uh, it's like a similar you can call it as a counter or a sequence number or row number whatever it is just it will generate from zero then zip so zip is one of the transformation you can call it as so primarily so when it comes to list if you want to merge both if you want to merge those you can use this zip you can use this zip so that is called merging so a combination of both list one and list two if you want to merge you can use zip one of the function and then finding minimum and maximum these are our common functions from core python so core python particular uh, list of values if you want to find the minimum value maximum value we can use this okay so this will help you uh, whenever you are working on numerical data finding minimum value and maximum value you can use core python functions then there is another function called is instance so primarily it will return true or false so verifying particular data type verifying particular data type if it is integer then return true if it is not if it is string return true like this particular variable or particular data 
if you want to verify we can go with that so 5 so 5 that is about maybe variable or value if it is integer the second argument is integer it will return true similar way double quotes or single quotes if it is a string it will return true so this will help you whenever you have a requirement to validate a particular variable if that particular variable or collection is particular that then proceed like this okay so that is called validating your data types in python so this, you can use this function that is called ease instance it will return true or false let's create one variable age equal to 35 so if age is integer then return true okay if i given a single quote so it's not integer so it is a string so it, it will return false so this way we can use ease instance particular object type particular object type and another function is reverse so reverse is one of the function where if you want to reverse the sequence item so sequence item means which is iterable object which will have a more than one values like a tuple list so this list of values whatever values are there just it will reverse the order so a b c d means d c a b whatever values are there whatever values are there okay and the similar way if you have a some values okay just 44 33 or maybe 55 or 20 second or maybe whatever it is random numbers i am giving so reverse means just it will first number will go last last number will go first so that is called reversed it's not ascending or descending so don't confuse on that reverse function always just it will replace the items positions the first one to last last one to first that's all okay it's not ascending or descending then another function we call sorted so this we will use for sorting ascending or descending depending on characters depending on numbers if you want to ascend or if you want to descend you can use a sorted then how it will consider ascending or descending means the default is ascending order and there is option called reverse okay if you make it reverse and true that will consider the descending let's consider this so just i'm doing a random i'm created random values and whenever i apply sorted then you can see a to z default ascending order then if i want to apply descending then you can go with reverse true so reverse true means descending order so that is called a sorted function from core python then globals so these two will help you to identify functions variables collections from existing which whatever you created so if you want to fetch whatever variables are created or maybe functions or maybe uh, particular collections maybe list tuple so you can use a global so globals will give you complete list of objects which we created in current session even spark related sessions also you can see the spark context spark session and everything you can see and whatever we created examples recently we created reversed that also you can see easy instance we can see so whatever we created variables collections functions everything we can see here with okay so that is called global so globals will give you completely key value paired data set so key value paired data set means so whatever we executed uh, in a json key value paired data set you say this key is a spark context and that value similar way sql context that value any user defined functions that value so whatever we executed those commands and values you can see here so just now we applied sorted so that also will be there Let's see here okay and that is about globals then so when it comes to locals so similar way global it will give you a local objects which it is created at that okay which is created at the session so in this session with these are you can consider as locals if i clear uh, state and result what will happen whatever we executed those will be cleared okay so if i run it again you can see very less so very less means previous whatever we executed local sessions everything is purged so locals will give you local session specific objects whatever we executed it may be variables functions 
but default anyway the session will have a spark context and spark session that it is displaying this is your spark session spark context sql context okay and so then there is a function called len if you want to calculate or find the length of particular values inside your collection okay i want to find how many items are in this collection okay then you can use len function it will give a total number of items a random is one module or you can say library in core python there multiple functions are available like generating a sequence numbers or shuffling the data that's one of the function called shuffle where it whatever data input data it will give randomly it will shuffle the data see 41235 okay now 31425 if i execute again 53124 that is called shuffle that is one of the function similar way Random, okay. So random numbers if you want to generate. So there you can use random integer. So random, it will randomly it will generate a zero to uh, the minimum value and maximum value. So maximum I gave a two hundred and minimum zero. So it will give a random number. So random number now twenty it is generated. If I execute forty, if I execute fifty four. So zero to hundred random it will give a random number. So that is called one is shuffle a random integer then there is another function called split so this will help you when you are working on unstructured data and just specifying a particular delimiter where you want to split the data so in this text i want to split into words based on space so split then specify the delimiter as a space then it will split into words and split always it will return a collection called a list python list you can see this okay so whenever you are using a python uh, split it will return a python list remember that then converting case upper case lower case if you have any strings if you want to convert into upper case you can convert use upper function in a similar way a lower function and replacing characters okay so if you want to replace characters we can go with using a replace function and wherever yes is there it will replace yes 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 wherever b is there it will replace so in data bricks so b is available yes is available so wherever yes is there you can see this b is there triple b's yes is there for yes that's called replace from one to then sub strip so strip primarily it is a kind of trim function in a databases so just eliminating white spaces left side and right side that is called a strip and a similar way l trim and all trim we can use a, a l strip and both both we can both is available r and l so left side and right side uh, white spaces if you want to remove let look at this example so strip means it will remove both side white spaces both side white spaces so just i will see here both side spaces are available right if i use yell strip then it will remove left side space you can see if i use r strip it will remove right side white spaces if i use a strip if i use a strip both left and right it's similar the same as a trim in trim in database l trim r trim and trim so that is called strip removing white spaces okay remember that then init cap in databases will have init cap right similar way capitalize so every word first character if you want to convert into upper case that is called capitalize so it will give you every word first character upper case that is called initial cap init cap in databases we have a function similar function here it is called capitalize then filter if you want to filter the data we can use filter function so just i'm creating one function where divided by two particular number if reminder is zero return true okay then so i'm generating a random 20 0 to 19 values it will generate so i'm applying a filter function on this function 
then I'm giving input data. So filters needed two arguments. One is a function, another one is data. So based on that function returning that condition, it will return true or false. Then it will give the filter the data. Finally, I'm converting into list just a displaying purpose. The similar way here, lambda function also we can use or this Python all function also we can use. So just if you look at this, so 0 to 19 values it will generate and whenever it is doing a filter condition, it will return true or false. So true or false means if that division is 0, then it will return true. Otherwise false means it will be ignored. So this way we can apply filter and reduce. So reduce primarily uh, we can use again inputs it's need a function and a data and whatever data you are giving and based on particular calculation it will do that and if you want to do cumulative sum of values of each uh, items whatever inside this collection then this function will reduce means it will give a single value cumulative value 1 plus 2 3 3 plus 3 6 6 plus 4 10 like this total 55 1 2 10 total value sum of 1 to 10 values then recursion so recursion like whenever you have requirement the same function within that if you want to use the same function okay so this is the function name the same function I'm going to use inside so that is called a recursion so recursion a few requirements you may have to use that so for that how to use uh, just a sample example how we will use recursion so Python also supports for that and uh, even you can see the same function I'm using here. Okay, same function I'm going to use and finally I'm giving an input as a list and that list it will take each length then it will verify and if it is a length of one equal to one. So it will take that index zero otherwise it will come to else. So else means index zero plus again same function it will be recalled from index one onwards that is called Python list will have a slicing so index 1 to end of the index so end of the index means each item will re repeatedly it will read and it will give that value so 1 plus next to 3 3 plus 3 6 6 plus 4 10 then 10 plus 5 15 15 plus 6 21 so whatever reduce function is doing a similar way here we are using with a recursion whatever reduce function is doing the similar concept we are doing with a recursion so some requirements if you want to use a recursion we can use a recursion and uh, yeah these are our examples then very important thing is list comprehensions so when it comes to PySpark, this will be used we uh, using frequently so how to use a li list comprehensions and uh, what are the advantages let's look at one example so list comprehensions means inside square brackets you can use a for loop if condition more than one if condition again nested uh, uh, square brackets also you can go for this nested for loop also you can go for that okay so and always the output it will return in python list so inside square brackets so first time what i'm doing i'm generating 0 to 11 I mean 0 to 10 values then i'm multiplying it's square root of 2 okay square root of 2 each value it will give a square root for that so 0 square 1 square 4 2 square 3 square like this you can see this so inside square brackets first generating values then applying one expression for example i want to add 10 for each value okay 0 plus 10 1 plus 10 2 plus 10 like this you can see this or maybe multiplication or maybe multiplication okay so this way which we can achieve square inside square you can use for loop again if condition also you can use so if condition means i want to i want to retrieve only even numbers so what you can do after generating a for loop we can use if condition if divided by two if reminder is zero then return that okay then return that so it it, it is returning 0 to 10 values only even numbers if reminder equal to 1 then odd values see so this is called for loop then condition finally it will result that 
finally it will give the result that so this way we can use list comprehensions so again inside uh, one square and one for loop again you can use another square that is called another list then inside you can use another if condition or maybe another for loop which is possible okay okay and there is another function called asset so primarily we can use this function for you know testing purpose or validation purpose so if you want to validate anything if you want to validate any data or maybe variables so any conditions if you want to verify so primarily we will use this for unit testing purpose so this function will help you on that so how it will help means so a certain particular condition space particular condition if that condition is satisfied then okay if condition is not satisfied then it will return error message whatever you are giving that error message that is called after comma whatever you are giving a message let's look at this example a equal to 5 b equal to 5 then just i'm giving assert statement so if this statement is true then it won't return anything if this statement is false so a equal to 5 b equal to 4 this statement is not satisfied then it is returning a error message called condition failed and a b values are not same just you can give an error message like this so it will give an error message like this so that is called assert error you can see this similar way a equal to 5 a equal to 7 sorry b equal to 7 so a equal to b so a equal to b is condition is not is satisfied or maybe not a not equal to b if a not equal to b is condition is satisfied then it won't return any message so asset also we can use for unit testing purpose so this will help you for unit testing purpose so these are our common core python functions which we can use and it will help you a lot whenever we are working in data engineering projects primarily pyspark so thank you for watching my videos. Thank you very much.